Hi, I'm Jody and I'm a computerholic. I'm also known as the Right Rev Rapmaster Cornflake. Well, that's my street name, in any case. My wife asked me to do a series of videos to help other people who can't afford to have someone else work on their computer. And this, this is the first one. I'm also a little sick, so I'm laying here today to talk to you about what to do if your computer won't power on at all, appropriately enough. Now, I tried to explain to my wife that if your computer doesn't come on, this video really isn't going to be able to be much use to you. But she didn't listen, and she controls the snack money, so here I lay. Her desire to help other people is strong, if somewhat misguided, and we'll just hope this one doesn't go awry. You know, I'd really love to tell you about the Chinese cheese whiz incident, but I've been sworn to silence. And when I say that, I mean that I was told not to mention cheese whiz or the homeless ever again, and there, there was a lot of swearing involved. Anyway, I dig digress. I'm here to talk today about computer problems, more specifically your computer not powering on at all. If your computer doesn't turn on, but it gives you the dreaded blue screen of death or some other error message, it, it's probably a software or operating system issue, and that's a topic for another video. It may even be a hard drive issue, which doesn't always mean that it needs to be replaced, but that's also a topic for another time. If you mash on that power button and you get nothing, no blinking lights, zilch, zip, nada, then it's all about the hardware. That limits your issue to one of the following four components. The first one I want to talk about is memory. If it powers on, it will probably give you a sustained beep, a long beep. That means that the power is working, however, the memory may not be plugged in all the way. If there's no memory on the motherboard, that's what happens. However, if the memory is bad, it will probably give you a series of stuttering beeps, three or four beeps immediately after you turn it on. Those are problems that you may have to diagnose using a method that I like to use where you take the memory off the motherboard, power it up, and get a beep. If you have more than one stick of memory, put one of them back, and if it comes on, no beeps, everything works, then the other stick of memory is bad. Swap them out, give it a try. If it doesn't power on, you've proven that that's the problem. And we'll have pictures of this later. We'll have pictures of this later on, on as my website, wife on, on the website, website as my wife reminds me. <coughs> Excuse me. If the problem is with the motherboard, this is a little harder to diagnose. However, one of the tricks that I like to use to try to figure it out is unhook everything from the motherboard except for four things. The power supply, the memory, the processor, and the video. Those are the only things that you need hooked up so that you can actually turn the computer on. Now, if you do that, the computer turns on, then your problem is with one of your peripheral devices, the CD-ROM drive, the USB devices, the keyboard, the mouse, something. Anything that could be pl plugged into the computer may be a problem. It has a possibility that it could be creating a conflict or have a short in it. Now, if your problem is with your processor, this one's a killer. Because if the processor goes bad, usually from heating problems, there's too much dust in your system, and it overheats, the processor cracks, stops working, then you're probably going to have to replace the processor. The problem with diagnosing processor problems is the only way to diagnose it is actually replace the processor. If you have to do that, you're probably better off upgrading your system. It could be a little more costly, however, it's a good bet that just replacing the processor may just be one more thing that you'll have to fix again later. So it's a good idea to get a new motherboard, a new processor, upgrade your memory, and you get a whole new computer out of it, but again, it's kind of an expense. And that may be something that you need to talk to a professional about. You can give me a call, otherwise send me a message through the website. The last one, the power supply. That's the one that everybody automatically assumes it might be. And you're probably right, because actually the power supply is the first thing to go bad on a desktop computer. It is supplying electricity to all of the things that you plug your computer into. 
and plug into your computer. The computer has a lot of devices that require a lot of power. If the power supply is bad, you're probably going to have to replace it. However, again, one of the ways to diagnose if that's the problem is start unhooking it from things. Turn the computer on and if the power supply fan does come on, then it's probably not the power supply. It's probably something that it's plugged into. However, if you try to turn the computer on and you've got everything unhooked except for the, again, motherboard, processor, power supply, and the video, nothing comes on. You see nothing on the screen, the lights don't come on on the box, then your power supply is probably bad. However, if it does, then one at a time start hooking it back up to those devices and you'll figure out which one is the problem. Now hopefully this has given you some good tips on how to diagnose this problem. But it's a heck of a lot easier to, to do the power supply yourself for fifty or sixty dollars yes. than to pay someone else to do it. Replacing the power supply is not hard. Just unhook four screws from the back of the back of the box. And we'll have pictures of Pull it out, pop a new one back in, and plug it all right back in where it was before. We'll have pictures of some of this on the website. We'll try to get some links up to descriptions on how to do some of these steps and as many pictures as we can find on the web that we may be able to need to reference. And it's always good to check on the internet for what the recommended power supply for your particular computer. Yes, that's crucial. The power supply has to be powerful enough to power all of the devices that are plugged into your computer. It can be more than you need, but it can never be less than you need. If you put in a power supply that's not strong enough, it will wear out too quickly. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, check the other links, check the other videos on our website for tips, and give me a call. I may be able to remote into your system if it does power on and help you solve some of these problems, like things tipping over next to it. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. My name again is Jody with J&J &J Bass Consulting. It's been a pleasure.